Chapter 3 A Second Kidnapping Very early the next morning, D'Artagnan went to the palace to find Madame Bonacieux. He gave her the small wooden box, and she hurried happily away to give it to the Queen. That evening, everybody in Paris was talking about the dinner at the palace. Hundreds of important people waited in the great dining room for the king and queen to arrive. First came the king, richly dressed but looking very angry. Next was the cardinal, looking proud but worried. And last, the queen, looking beautiful but tired. The king and cardinal were some way away from the queen, so they couldn't see her very well. Both of them kept their eyes on her dress. She was wearing the diamonds, but it wasn't easy to count them. Are there ten or twelve? The cardinal asked himself. He was playing a dangerous game, and he knew it. I've told the king that two are missing. Milady's given me the two diamonds stolen from Buckingham. So how can there be twelve on the queen's dress? Suddenly, the king called across the long table to the queen... I am sorry that you're not wearing all my diamonds, madame. The queen lifted her beautiful head proudly. I don't know what you mean, sir, she said. And she turned to him. The king and the cardinal counted twelve diamonds on her dress. Well, cardinal, shouted the king angrily. What's all this about? Are you laughing at me? Explain yourself at once. I'm sorry, sir, replied the cardinal. I... I made a mistake. The queen smiled secretly to herself. And so did D'Artagnan. He was the only one in the crowd who knew what was happening. Just then he felt a woman's hand on his arm. He looked down and saw a letter on the ground. The woman was moving away, but he knew that it was Madame Bonacieux. He took up the letter, opened it, and read it. It said, I'd like to thank you for what you've done. Come to the little house at the end of Avenue saint Cloud, at ten o'clock tomorrow night and wait outside for me. Constance Bonacieux. The next evening, he rode excitedly through the dark streets to the Avenue saint Cloud. It was a quiet and lonely part of Paris and even brave D'Artagnan started to feel afraid. But he saw no one and waited until 11 o'clock outside the little house. He began to feel worried. Why isn't she here? He thought. What's happened? Then he saw an old man walking slowly past. Excuse me, said D'Artagnan. Have you seen a young woman go into this house? The old man looked afraid. If I tell you, perhaps the cardinal's men will find out and kill me. Oh, so his men were here, were they? That's right, sir, with a dark, well-dressed man. They took the young woman from the house and drove away in a carriage. This is terrible, thought D'Artagnan. The man from Mung has kidnapped the poor woman again. Is she hurt? 
Is she dead? How can I get her back this time? I know. I'll ask Athos what to do. He rode fast to Athos's house and woke up his friend. Athos listened carefully to D'Artagnan's story. Too late to do anything tonight, he said. But tomorrow, I'll ask Monsieur de Treville to speak to the Queen about it. She'll find out where the Cardinal is keeping Madame Bonacieux prisoner. Thank you. You're lucky that you've never been in love. Do you think so? But I can tell you a love story, if you like. It's about a friend of mine, not me, you understand. Well, my friend was the head of one of the great French families. When he was twenty-five, he fell in love with a girl of sixteen. She was very beautiful, with long blonde hair and blue eyes. He married her, and for a time they were very happy. Then one day, when they were riding together, she fell off her horse and hurt her arm. He ran to help her and opened the top of her dress for her. There, on her shoulder, he saw that she was branded. What a terrible story, cried D'Artagnan. She was branded because she was a thief. He killed her. He hanged her from the nearest tree. That's why I never fall in love now. D'Artagnan couldn't forget Athos's story. He was riding home, thinking hard when he saw a carriage with a beautiful blonde lady in it. She was talking angrily to a well-dressed Englishman. He was sitting on his horse and laughing at her. Can I help you, madame? called D'Artagnan. Is this gentleman being rude to you? I can teach him a lesson if you like. Milady smiled up at D'Artagnan. Thank you, sir, but this gentleman is my brother-in-law, Lord de Winter. De Winter looked angry. This is none of your business, young man, he said crossly. Kindly leave us alone. No one speaks to me like that, sir, replied D'Artagnan. Let's talk about this later. On the south side of the palace, perhaps? Shall we say six o'clock? I'll be there, said de Winter. D'Artagnan's plan was to find out more about Milady. When, later that day, the two men met and fought, D'Artagnan won easily. I won't kill you. He told de Winter. If you agree to take me to visit your sister-in-law. When I saw her today, I fell in love with her. Lord de Winter thanked D'Artagnan for sparing his life, and they agreed to meet at Milady's house the next day. <laughs> <laughs>